Hey, everybody. This is Heidi St. John. Welcome to the Off the Bench podcast. Today, I'm excited to have Connor Boyack and Daniel Harmon on the show. You guys know I am a super fan of the Tuttle Twins, and these guys are the dynamic duo behind the children's series, which takes what could be complicated topics like capitalism and the Federal Reserve and socialism and basically teach your kids the ideas of freedom. This is going to be a fantastic interview. Stick around. I think you're going to be encouraged. Well, welcome to the show, you guys. I'm going to jump right in because you hear me talking about this every day here at the show, that the United States and the principles that made us the greatest, most freest nation on the face of the earth are being attacked every single day right here from within our own government. And I'm thrilled because as a mother of seven, I have always been looking for ways to teach my children the ideas of freedom. Somebody introduced me to the work of the Tuttle Twins several years ago, and I started reading it. And in fact, I was learning, actually, I learned how stupid I was when I was reading the Tuttle Twins books because I was reading their books. And finally, I understood for the first time the Federal Reserve. I finally understood the creature of Jekyll Island. I was like, oh, my word, this makes so much sense. These guys are doing such good work for freedom and helping you give your kids some broccoli for their brains. And I'm just thrilled to have them here. Connor and Daniel, welcome to the show. Thanks, Heidi. Thank you. So I want to jump in. I'm going to just jump right into the deep end here because the the, the culture is on fire right now. Right. So we're watching what's happening at the Grammys and, and people in our, you know, in our woke culture right now, openly worshiping the devil and CBS talking about how it's time to worship and all the garbage that's happening that's coming out of the entertainment industry and no, and the leader of the pack is Disney. And I'm wondering, did you guys hear what happened with the Proud Boys or the Proud family over the weekend? I did. I saw that clip uh, circulating on Twitter. Daniel, did you happen to catch it? I heard about it. No, I haven't caught the clip yet. Maybe I'm better off for it. <laughs> uh, so this is amazing. I, I'm going to I'm going to make you guys super happy right now and just play a little bit of the intro of the real history of uh, slavery from the Proud family. So listen to this, you guys, and then I'm going to get your comment on it. This country was built on slavery, which means slaves built this country. Tilled this land from sea to sea to sea. First there was rice, tobacco, sugar cane. Then Whitney did his thing and cotton became king. And we were its soldiers. Four million strong. Fighting for America's freedoms, even though we remained America's slaves. slaves. Built this country. The descendants of slaves continue to build this. Slaves, slaves built this country. country. And we, the descendants of slaves in America, have earned reparations for their and continue to earn reparations every moment we spend submerged in the systemic prejudice, racism, and white white supremacy supremacy that America was founded with and still has not atoned for. Slaves built this country. All right, that's about all I can stomach. Oh, boy. So this stuff is being fed to children, right? And when they're talking about uh, reparations and the white supremacy in the country, a picture of a white, you know, the Ku Klux Klan and a white burning cross is in the is in the foreground of that particular video. What do you guys think about this ideology that's really being pushed to kids in so-called kids programming? Daniel? Oh, you're going to badly kick this one off? <laughs> no, Connor, <laughs> I'll defer to you. <laughs> okay, all right, sounds good. So uh, I, I want to be magnanimous before I get up on my soapbox. So <laughs> I, I saw this full clip uh, a couple of days ago. It is such garbage. It is reflective of the degraded quality of kids media. That's why we partnered with Daniel and Angel Studios to launch the Tuttle Twins cartoon after having done the books for a while with Elijah. And uh, because we were seeing so many parents were fed up, but not really knowing other than telling their kids not to watch Disney or not to watch Nickelodeon, because it's in Blue's Clues and it's in all the rest uh, that, you know, parents were struggling to know what they could give their kids not cheesy, you know, whatever, boring stuff, but like stuff they would actually enjoy watching and learning from. I, I think it's amazing to see how brazen and open the people behind these shows are being. And I mean, it was it was crazy. We got attacked and criticized when we launched the cartoon. Oh, you're going to more propaganda for kids. And and to that, I say, absolutely. It is propaganda. Everything is propaganda. And yep. if you think that your ideological enemies are not also propagandizing your kids through media and social media and TikTok and all the rest, you're up in the night. We need to engage in the battle of ideas. We are on an ideological battlefield. It's a war of the mind. And if we are not packaging and presenting our ideas in compelling, attractive, and persuasive ways, then we will lose. And we are losing. And I'm sick of playing defense. I want to go on the offense. 
that's the goal of and the story behind the Tuttle Twins. Yeah. And really our kids, I mean, this has been happening. This is, you know, the battle battle cry of my life. All seven of our kids are homeschooled and my grandkids are being homeschooled now because we saw 24 years ago, there was an ideological battle coming to the government school system in the United States. And the public schools are the front line of the culture war. And our kids are being taught that reparations are a good thing, that capitalism is a bad thing, that socialism is a good thing. Uh, I saw a protester on the streets of Portland, Oregon, where I live not too far from, and they were talking about Mao and praising the guy. Instead of saying this guy was a murderer and a communist, they're saying, I'm going to run and be a leader like Mao. And so many of these college kids are following. Daniel, I'm curious to know, because you guys have been uh, at the front lines of this for a long time, and it takes a lot to get the attention of a child. When you're talking about big ideas like the Federal Reserve, uh, what is your sort of strategy to engage children? They're used to quick moving. You know, we just uh, took a look at what Disney's doing with the Proud Family. It's very quick moving, and they're they're brainwashing these kids. What's your tack with children? So the vision for the show has always been to have the kids have it be entertaining, engaging um, enough and characters that kids can relate with in such a way that they choose it as entertainment over their options on Netflix, on Disney Plus, on YouTube, on TikTok, wherever they're going to find it. That's been the goal is that at the end of the day, we want them to choose Tuttle Twins for fun and then get really great lessons along the way. And so far, that seems to be happening. We have a really high rating on IMDb, um, the Internet Movie Database. We have a really high rating on Rotten Tomatoes with our audience score. People are really resonating with the message. And then they get these really great little pockets of, of truth and principles of freedom that come along with it. I always think of the original Spider-Man with Tobey Maguire. With great power comes great responsibility. responsibility. That's right, Heidi. You can. That's right. You guys can complete it just like anybody else can. We we learned that lesson because it was encapsulated in such a great story, and that's kind of what we're going for with this: is to have something that kids are just like, oh, this is. They're singing along with it. They're ha they're having fun with it. They're wearing the t-shirts. They they want to buy the plushies. That that's that's what we're going for: is building a brand that has that sort of magnetism just from the front and entertainment standpoint. And I think parents are frustrated. You guys rightly hit the nail on the head. And it seems to me, Connor, you wouldn't have created this unless you were also frustrated. You know, parents trying to teach our kids basic ideas about the founding of our country, about capitalism. And when they go off to the schools, those ideas are undermined. What was the, you know, the impetus behind you going, you know what, I'm going to do this and it's going to change the way we talk about economics and politics to our kids? At the time when we started, this was 20. 14, we weren't so much responding to all the crazy that was happening because things got much crazy, you know, many years later, especially 2020. At the time, Elijah, who's my partner and our illustrator of the books, he and I were just dads of young kids who are passionate about the ideas of freedom. And we were kind of talking amongst ourselves, how would we, how do we talk to our kids about this? I run a think tank, a nonprofit where we change laws all the time called Libertas Institute. So my day job is fighting for freedom. And I wanted to, tell my kids what dad does for work. I didn't want to just say I type on computers or I talk to people. I wanted to engage them substantively in the ideas, didn't know how to do it, literally went on Amazon, searched for like, you know, books that teach about free markets, kids books about property rights and all the rest and came up short. There was nothing at the time. So for us, I kind of feel like Tuttle Twins was the, you've heard of this term when preparation meets opportunity. We, we were prepared in the early years, just producing all these materials, just because we thought it would be a fun, good, helpful thing. 2020, the world goes crazy, authoritarianism on the rise, everyone's homeschooling for at least a couple of weeks. People are freaking out. What happened to my country? How do I talk to my kids about what's going on? Tuttle Twins was ready and we exploded. And, and the whole six years prior to that, cumulatively, we sold a, a total of about 750,000 books, self-published little project. We were tickled with ourselves. In 2020 alone, we sold 1.3 million books, almost double the entire past six years. So that's when we really exploded. That's when people, parents have been desperately searching for information ever since then. Um, and so now it transitioned. Before it was just, hey, this is a good thing to teach kids and let's have some fun doing it. Now it is like a strategic project to get it into the classrooms, to get it into the homes. 
as a counter agent to all the nonsense that is being broadcast and bombarded into their living rooms and dinner tables. We want to make sure that the Tuttle Twins is in there in that conversation to be teaching these good ideas. So for us, this is a, a massive campaign now where before it was just this fun little side project. Now we are all in on uh, leaning into this battle because it is, as we've said, an ideological war and too many casualties are happening. Yeah, and almost all of the casualties are children. You know, someone said to me not too long ago, you know, why do you care so much about education? You know, your kids aren't even in the public schools anymore, which they're right, they're not. But every single one of us needs to be concerned about education. These are tomorrow's teachers, tomorrow's leaders, tomorrow's judges, tomorrow's lawmakers, for goodness sake, tomorrow's doctors. We just lived through three years of a nightmare watching that we can no longer trust the medical institutions. What's going to happen when we when we crank out, you know, 100,000 socialist doctors, real ones, right, who actually believe in the ideas of communism, and then they enter into the medical uh, establishments? We're going to be in trouble. Daniel, I got to ask, because uh, I've been reading up on you guys. Right? I'm stalking you on the interwebs. And one of the things I loved about uh, the Rona, one of the only things I loved about living through COVID was watching the commercials of the Tuttle Twins that would come across, <laughs> come across my desk. And I'm sharing, you know, I'm sharing them with our staff here at, uh, at Friendly Planet Family with the nonprofit. You guys had a genius marketing campaign uh, to get the Tuttle Twins uh, attention for parents, because really that's who you're marketing to, right? You got to get the attention of the parents. And I noticed that you did it in really creative ways. How get how did you how did you come up with that strategy? It was genius. Well, let me just. There's been a lot of uh, marketing. Um, there's been a lot of ad creates for created for Tuttle Twins. Could you specify which ones you're talking about for me? Because you might have seen. Well, my, the one that comes to my mind is specifically our moms in the kitchen. You know, talking to their kids mm. about yeah, what's that. happening in the culture, and I was like. Bang! Hits the nail on the head, you know. And this mom's like, I don't know. And it's like, oh, yeah. I, it was, it was genius. Yeah, I'm gonna stroke Daniel's ego a little bit. So <laughs> one of the reasons why we started working uh, together a couple years ago, his his brother Jeffrey is on the the board of our nonprofit. Daniel and I and his brothers have collaborated on various projects over the years with Bitcoin and, and other things. And so these guys, I knew them as a family that loved freedom. They were reading Tuttle Twins with their kids. Daniel was maybe uh, still is a uh, chief uh, marketing officer and creative officer over at Harmon Brothers, which is an ad agency that Daniel and his brothers had been doing for years. And they had perfected this idea of using humor and a little mm -hmm. bit of satire in advertisements for like deodorant. And I mean, if you've seen like poopery and squatty oh, yeah, everyone's, and, oh, everyone has seen them. Oh, yeah, I know. I read yeah. you guys are behind him like, oh, Things are making so much sense to me now. <laughs> yeah, it's all the all the poop jokes. That's where they all come from. So, so Daniel and his team were over there doing all this before the Tuttle Twins cartoon, and I was learning a lot from them because they did marketing so well. So the the particular ad that you're referring to was one that we did for the books, not that Daniel did for the cartoon. And uh, but I was able to use a lot of kind of the Harmon Brothers magic to push those ads. I wanted to use humor. I wanted to show moms like here's a relatable mom that's struggling with her kid turning into a little Marxist, you know, in a public school, maybe you ought to do something about that. And, uh, and so with Daniel, they've been able to replicate the same thing for the cartoon where they can take that same marketing magic that they've done. When we launched the cartoon, we kind of replicate, we had something similar. It was a teacher uh, that was talking about not wanting to teach communism like all the other teachers are teaching. And he would like, you know, spray bottle the kid who was trying to steal the, the TV and uh, because it's, it's our TV, right? Not my TV, not your TV. So, Watch your pronouns. Uh, so just, Watch your pronouns. It, humor is just an effective way uh, to, to deliver a message, to get someone to take action. It's what the Harmon brothers have done super well. And, and certainly with the Tuttle Twins cartoon, we've been able to replicate that too. Amazing. And, and, and where do you guys see it going from here? So you've, you've done a really effective job, I think, at getting the, the attention of parents. I love what you said, Connor. It's, it's true. Parents are like, wait a second. You're, how, how, how are my kids turning into little Marxist? Well, they're turning into a little Marxist because that's what they're hearing about uh, in their auditorium for their school show, you know, for all the things that are coming into the schools right now. But you guys have your work cut out for you. Because I'm imagining that the government school system isn't calling you up and saying, hey, really <laughs> like your ideas. We, we just got done reading, you know, Creature of Jekyll Island, and we'd like to order 800,000 of those to put into the schools. How do parents, uh, how do parents combat this? Uh, I had the CEO of Prager University on the show last week, and then uh, we, and we were talking about just this cancer 
that has metastasized now into our into our elementary schools and into our high schools. Where where do you guys see this going? Well, yeah, to, I mean, to speak to that to some degree, I think parents are finally waking up to the fact that they are primarily responsible for the education of their kids, whether that be the decision to put them in the public school system, to put them in a private school, to homeschool them, to do some combination of all. They it is it is up to them. And in the past, I think it's been a little bit of a default thing of just like kids reach this age, just send them off to school. It's they're going to be OK, whatever. There's some downsides to it, but not really worry about it. And then 2020 kind of woke them up to a little bit of what was going on, because now the video feeds from the classroom are coming directly into the house. Parents are finally seeing what um, curriculum is being taught with the attitudes of some of the teachers towards these types of ideas. And they're all of a sudden saying, wait a minute, this stuff that's being taught to my kid does not align with my own values. And that, and I think that's why you are seeing so much of the success with the sales of the book series and now with the TV show is that parents are like, oh, OK, I have to do something about this. I can't wait around for things to change in my 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 public school here nearby or on a national level or state level or whatever it is. I've just got to do something about this with my own kids. And that's why we're seeing so much of the way of sales and so much hunger for this type of material just to be they're just for tools to be able to teach the things that they already believe in. And in some cases, it now helps them articulate in, and and identify the things they believe in in a way that they never have and be like, oh, well, this this is why I believe the way I did. Well, this is where inflation is coming from. It's like you said, there's these conversations that are happening around the dinner table are huge for for parents and kids both. And um, yeah, that's that's kind of uh, my thoughts on it right there. I got something briefly to add to that. When we started the Tuttle Twins books, we thought we were producing children's books. What we've since learned and realized is that what we've been producing is family resources. Because like you, Heidi, so many parents reach out to us and said, oh my gosh, I never learned this in school. Wow, I'm learning things for the first time. So what we realized is that we were reaching not only the rising generation, but their parents as well. If you were to take that average mom or dad and stop them on the street and say, hey, here's this uh, book, Economics in One Lesson by Henry Hazlitt, or The Road to Serfdom by Hayek, or any of these like classic free market liberty books, right? Chances are like what, sub 1% of them would actually read this dense, you know, nonfiction book written decades ago. But when we say, hey, do you want your kids to learn about entrepreneurship or about money or about the golden rule or about how the world works? Well, every good parent for the most part is going to say, yes, please. And now because their barrier, their, their defenses have come down and we've lowered the barrier of entry for this information, we're educating the parents too. That to me has been our critical problem for the freedom movement so-called, however you want to define that, conservatives, libertarians, and all the rest. We have consistently waited until people become of voting age, adults, before we reach out to them and talk to them about our ideas, which means that our ideological opponents have them captured in these institutions for the first two decades, which is why we're forever playing defense. I'm tired of that. I don't want to do that anymore. I want to empower parents to have conversations around the dinner table about these ideas that matter. But too many of them feel ill-equipped to do it because they themselves are graduates of the public school system, as I like to call it. And, uh, and so they don't feel competent in talking about free market economics with their kids or talking about that cartoon we just saw and heard and you know what reparations is and why you know it's so awful the parents are not able to competently engage with their kids about these ideas therefore they don't and so then those kids hear it on TikTok or you know from a friend or whatever and they're like imbibed with they're, they're just drinking up this information because the parents are not there to teach them every you know religious parent thinks like obviously they should take the kid to Sunday school or do bible study or whatever we we all as religious parents those of us, we think about transmitting our religious faith and our ideas and our knowledge and beliefs to our children. We should be doing the same thing when it comes to our political and our economic values and understanding. Too few parents do. What the Tuttle Twins does, both the books and the cartoon, is it facilitates for those parents an easier opportunity to learn for themselves, but then also to have a discussion as a family together. Man, it's so good. What do you say? Here's here's a sticky wicket for you. What do you say to the to the parent who goes, listen, I don't need to teach my kids about politics because it's so far, you know, it's so far above my pay grade or I don't understand. I mean, you guys heard me say a few minutes ago that I was struggling to understand the history of the Federal Reserve. And I got, you know, I got some 
some pretty heady books on it and sit there reading and about 15 minutes into it, I was like, listen, I don't have time for this garbage. And then I realized that you guys had written on it. I, I do think you're right. I think that you're educating parents who then can educate their children. But what do you say to the parent who is listening to this right now, who still is like, oh, I just don't know how important that is uh, for the next generation? Because my thoughts always been, I don't care if you're not if you're not interested in politics. Politics is interested in you. Daniel, maybe let me take this briefly and then throw it to you because I'm going to have to drop off here in just a second. Uh, we used to hear that far more than we do now. Post-2020, we don't really hear that anymore. To Daniel's earlier point, I think parents are... I, I hate to say they woke up because the word woke in my mind is just now destroyed. <laughs> They've ruined but, it, uh, yeah. <laughs> they have awakened. They have opened their eyes, right? They have taken the red pill. And so we have far less of that now. I think that is the silver lining of COVID. We've seen across the country homeschooling triple. We've seen parents engage way more. I think the toothpaste is out of the tube. Um, and, and that's a good thing in a lot of ways. We can, despite all the horrible things that we had to go through, the nightmare, as you say, that we lived for the past three years, um, I think we can actually see opportunities here, including with parents who are hungry for opportunities for their kids, who recognize the problem. Now it's up to us to wave our hands and say, hey, we have a solution, right? That's where the clever, fun ads come in, trying yeah. to kind of tell people about the solution. But the, the word is out on the street that there are problems. That much is, is certain. I agree. Uh, before, I know you got to jump really quick, Connor. You've got a history book about the about America. What's the name of it? Yeah, so uh, TuttleTwins.com slash history is where you can find this. It's called America's History. All the other books we reviewed out there being used in the classrooms, the social studies books and everything else, they all teach what happened. They all are chucked full of, you know, this soldier went here and they fought at this regiment and the clouds were cumulonimbus that day and they ate hardtack and all these random factoids of history, which are interesting if you're ever going to be on Jeopardy or something. But we learn from the past so that we don't repeat it. And that means if we want to learn history, we have to learn the ideas, the values, the philosophies, the concepts, the ideas. That is all absent from these social studies books. Kids today are not being taught to learn from the past. They are simply being taught about the past. Our Tuttle Twins book, it's 240 pages, America's history. It's all story-based. It's one big, uh, it's a series of stories. So we talk about early American history, but more importantly, in addition to talking about what's going on in the various events, which you ha obviously have to do in a history book, we are talking about the ideas that they were debating, the values they had, the tension of power, and what that means today, what it looks like today, so that we can learn from history and apply it to our world today. So that's at TuttleTwins.com slash history. It's an awesome book that I'd encourage everyone to get. Awesome. Hey, Connor, I know you got to jump. Thank you for coming. I appreciate it. Thank you, Heidi. Talk to you soon. Well, I hope you guys have been enjoying this interview with the creators and producers of the Tuttle Twins. We're going to come back tomorrow and talk more about the ideas of freedom. And if you want your kids to understand more about the free market and how it works, I'm telling you what, the Tuttle Twins is going to make them smarter than most of our members of Congress. The Tuttle Twins series should be a part of your library, particularly if you're homeschooling. But if you've got kids at all, I hope you guys will check it out. Thanks for listening today, everybody. And I will see you back here again tomorrow at the intersection of faith and culture. <laughs>